This video is going to show you, uh, mostly show you how to replace or install a new backflow prevention valve in your yard irrigation system using uh, unions, using something like this. So a little history, I've had really bad luck with these. I've had them crack every time it freezes where I live. And um, I've tried different things. So that's, you can see where I cut it out. It was right there. Um, I've tried uh, draining. I drained this, this last season. Uh, this is a Watts model. That's all I'll say about that. Uh, what else have I done? I've tried to put little drain spigots there on each side. Uh, but look where mine cracked. Even after all of that prevention, uh, it cracked right here in the ball valve. Can you see right there? Cracked, right? So anyway, I'm tired of this. <laughs> I'm tired of these breaking. They get more expensive every year. The labor gets more expensive every year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a new one like this. And I'm going to use what's called a union. So the way this works is... Um, it connects two pieces without having to use glue or anything. So there's a rubber o-ring right here and a flat side here. So what you do is you basically PVC cement this on the two ends. You want to get this this collar here. This collar screws on and basically pulls them together. Now one trick is when you get it all set up and everything ready before you glue, you want these as close as possible. Uh, not overlapping but try to get them as close as possible because this collar when you screw it on it'll pull them a little bit right so when it comes on here uh, when it goes on there it'll pull them together now I have a little flex not much I've got a little flex in my pipes so I can work with that and if we look down here at the new valve, what you'll do is, uh, there's different, you can get male fittings here that screw, these are threaded, right? So on each side, my valve is a one inch, but if you have a three quarter or a different size, just make sure your PVC matches what your valves. This is one inch. So what I did was I've got, I bought a one piece like this, one inch that's threaded on both sides and I cut it in half. And so, let me start on this side here. What I'll do is, I'll use some Teflon tape and I'll screw this in on this side. Like, uh, okay, this one in easy when I was prepping it. Okay, so anyway, that will screw in. I'll Teflon tape that. And then you'll have the other side. So over here, where it sits, this will be my pipe coming out. I gotta take that um, coupling off. And so these will be like this. Sorry. So imagine these like this, so very close. And then I'm gonna, I'll probably put the valve in the direction of the water. So this is a smooth, it's called a smooth. Uh, sorry, slip joint. Some of these have threads, some of these are smooth. It doesn't matter, it depends what you're connecting to. Since I'm on a smooth pipe here, I'm doing a smooth. So I'll PVC glue this in like that. And the big trick here is make sure, <laughs> make sure that collar is on before you put this on. Because if you do it out of order, you're gonna be screwed and have to cut this off again. So I'll glue this side. And then on the other side here, and again, th these are the two surfaces, if you ever get confused, these are the two surfaces that press together and hold the seal. On the other side, on the pump side, sorry, the valve side, I'll glue that. And so I'm going to try to get these as close as possible. And then the final step is you just screw them like that. And you won't need any glue or Teflon tape or anything because that o-ring will press against that other side and seal it. So the nice thing is once I have that in there and it's connected up there, every winter I can just remove this backflow prevention valve and just take it in the house for the winter and it'll never freeze again. So I'm going to try to do all this and come back when it's done, but uh, it's definitely worth the effort to do this, especially if you had it cracked or even better, you're doing this before you have a crack 
just do this now, you'll save yourself a lot of headache. Okay, here's a quick update before I cement everything together. So this is my new backflow prevention valve. Those are the connections I want to put it on each side. Uh, I went ahead and got the uh, the 80 schedule plastic. It's just a more heavy duty plastic uh, thickness for PVC than the white. Uh, for this kind of attachment, I think it's worth just paying the extra money to have the durability. So remember, when you're working with PVC, um, I'm just fitting that on. I haven't glued anything yet, so you want to make sure things fit. This is going to be this is going to be one end of the union fitting here. So you want to make sure everything will uh, fit it by hand before you glue, because once you start cementing. So that's just giving me an idea. Push it all the way down. Push this all the way back. And then um, on the valve itself, you got a couple of options here. These are male ends. Uh, this is a male adapter end. And this is just one inch. My valve is one inch, right? So if you had a three quarter valve, you do three quarter inch. But this is uh, threaded. PVC on the end. So the advantage to this is on the end over here um, If you don't have a lot of space to work with when you put this in here Well if it was all the way in This is space that I want to eventually attach over here and I like it takes up space whereas if I have this direct pipe already threaded Once that's screwed in uh, and I can just cut this to the right size here. Um, I can put an attack. I can use this space as opposed to here. I have to fit some. Anyway, long story short is I've got. If you're in a tight space situation, which I am here, uh, this gives me a little more flexibility to kind of cut this and match. And what you'll eventually do is here. Let me put this up. You'll put this in, and I'm gonna. Put this guy back. Oh, sorry. So, all right, not going well, folks. But assume that was on there. I'm going to basically try to cut this, cut it here and here, so that that these ends match up just as close as I can without overlapping. So that's the goal. And uh, also, be sure you use plumber's tape. Use this on this uh, threaded connection when you're threading. I won't be cementing. Don't cement this, you can just thread it. Just use plumber's tape to wrap, like I did over here. So, if you look on this end, that's a little bit of plumber's tape right there. So just, that'll help the water fitting. It'll just help reduce leaks. Anyway, the next shot I hope is the uh, final assembly. All right, let's take a look. It's coming along well. So what I did was, I measured on both sides. Um, I glued this part down already and that. Um, this is not glued on yet. I'm just measuring it. So look at that. It measures just right in there. Whoops. Right there. And ironically, uh, it's raining on me as I film this. <laughs> so these union, what I'll do is, uh, when I finish cementing this side, I'll just screw these on, on both sides here and here. See, they just screw in like that. And I'm gonna turn the water on and uh, we'll see if it leaks or not. Not bad for someone who's not a plumber. Okay, final test. A few things to note when you connect everything back up. First, look at the arrow, the direction of your valve. Make sure when you got it on there, it's in the direction you want it going. That is the way I want it going. Check each of these little valves with a flathead screwdriver. You want to make sure they're off. Horizontal is off. Vertical means they're open. You can actually look through. You can take these little caps off and look in there. One of these from the factory was on. The rest were off. I have no idea, but check that. Um, when you turn on the water supply, uh, make sure these two, this double handle valve, make sure this is in the off position. So the handle going perpendicular is off. When you turn it in line it's on so make sure those are both off 
You may have to hand tighten your union connections if you see a little bit of leaking around here on either side. So turn on your water source. Water source is here. Check here. Tighten if you need. Turn on the first valve here. Then turn on the second one here. You can hear the water. Well, I don't know if you heard that, but you can hear the water going through. Inspect for any leaks. If you have a leak coming out of here, that's a little more serious. You could have a defective backflow valve. Um, if you have leaks over here, you can hand tighten, you can maybe hand tighten them or use a, try not to use a, a set of pliers, channel lock pliers if you don't need to, but if you have to, tighten that down to get this connection. So this is officially done. So these union connections are gonna allow me in the winter time or during freezing temperature to just take my entire backflow valve off take it in the house it'll never freeze or crack again I should have done this years ago um, as a side note I got little pressure relief valves here so for example in the winter when I shut this off that's off shut off at my source before I take it in the house there's water in here right this could still freeze on either side so what I did was you don't have to do this if it's insulated but just that's a pressure release there. Up oh, over there, there. That's a pressure release on the other side. That should die down a second. I hope, because I have the water off. All right. That would eventually release itself into the lawn into the um, underground pipes, but that's just to take that off. All right, so that pressure's off. You can also take pressure by removing this top plate with a, I forget, a half inch wrench, I think. So now, whenever I want to take it in, all I do, undo one side, undo the other side, Put some support under here so you don't crack anything. So release that, release this, and look at that. I can now take this into a safe area and it'll never freeze or crack again. Uh, good luck with your backflow valve project. Okay, one last quick follow up to my video of putting a union fittings on your backflow valve. So when it's off, um, you're going to have holes <laughs> like that. And this is outside, right? So you don't want critters or things. Oh, got a slight leak there. Uh, you don't want critters and things getting in there. So um, you can't put, normally you could just put a PVC cap, but the way the, that's not going to fit well on a PVC cap. So you got to find something that can go in there that's weather resistant. Uh, I just happen to have these, uh, these are like silicon caps. I think I bought these online for uh, different jug sizes. I forget what project I was doing. They got a little hole in here, but they come in a variety of sizes. So just measure this hole. And I just put these in here and they work fine. I guess you could put like maybe a rag in there, but you risk possibly stuff going back in here and clogging it. Whereas this kind of uh, plug, there's no risk. First of all, it's, uh, do you see how it's tapered? It's smaller on the bottom than the top, so it won't go in and go down. <laughs> but it also won't have any debris go in there as well. So I just happen to have these. You might find other things around your house that could do well for like a plug. And when you're not using it, you probably want to plug it up just so nothing, no debris goes down in there and clogs up your system.